It's stack time. And in today's video, I'm checking out the Topping E70, but not the same one that I reviewed already. This is the Topping E70 Velvet. Let's get it. What's cracking, audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. So feast your eyes on this beauty here. There she is. That is the Topping E70 Velvet. This one retails for 449 US dollars. Inside of here, we're looking at an AKM AK4499EX DAC chip. That is AKM's new flagship uh, DAC chip. And that is the re well, that's the primary reason why the E70 Velvet costs around $100 more than the stock. E70. So let's talk about it and talk about what differences there are. So physically, you can see that ooh, there's the original. You can see they are exactly the same on the outside. So on the front, we've got a little touch sensitive button there. It's really hard to see. I wish they'd make it stand out a bit more. But if you tap on that, it cycles through your various input options. If you do a long press, it will turn the unit off. And this is the lovely OLED display you can see there. And this knob on the right, it doesn't do anything now because I'm in DAC mode, which means it's a fixed level output, but you can also use it as a preamp. And this is also a button. And if you press it, it cycles between the various outputs. So you can have XLR or you can have RCA or you can have both at the same time. There are many more options in the sub menu, but in order to access that, you have to turn off the unit, hold this button down and then turn it back on again. And that takes you into the setup menu. And it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit of a hassle. I much prefer the way they do it with the SMSL DAX, like the DO300. I love that menu system, but you know, I am a fan of the displays on these topping units. And once you've got it set it up, you very rarely need to go into the setup menu anyway. So this baby does all that good stuff. You know, it's got the XMOS XU316 inside, does up to DSD 512 and PCM 768 kilohertz, as you would expect. And of course, it comes with Bluetooth 5.1 and supports LDAC. AAC, SBC, APTX, APTX LL, and APTX HD. Oh, and APTX Adaptive as well. So yeah, it's got all those wireless, high-res wireless codecs supported. Loving that. Let's have a quick look at the back, and hopefully I don't rip any cables out because they're a bit short. And that's not the fault of the cables. That's just the way I've got my setup here. So you've got your balanced XLR outputs, your RCA out, and then you've got coaxial, optical, USB, and Bluetooth inputs. Next is, if you can see it in there, is the 12 volt trigger system. It's got a trigger in and a trigger out, which is really sweet because it means you can turn, like if you've got a stack of topping devices, or not necessarily topping, but if you've got other components with that trigger system, you can turn them all off and on at the same time. And the, the E70 Velvet here, and the original E70, they it does have an automatic uh, power on when it detects signal. It will turn itself on and it will automatically select the correct input. And the same happens uh, when there is no audio signal for one minute, it will go to sleep. All right, let's talk about the sound now. And uh, I was using this primarily with the Topping L70 amp headphone amp because that's a, just a beautiful unit. It's very clean and transparent. And I would say the sound of the E70V, V for Velvet, the E70V is also very clean and transparent. Look, the differences between this and the original E70, I'll be straight with you, they are very, very minimal. But whether you want to spend that extra money is up to you. I'll tell you what the differences are. But first, let's talk about how this particular unit, the E70V, sounds. In my opinion, the E70 Velvet aptly lives up to its name. 
because it does deliver a smooth and silky sound. However, it does not compromise on detail or transparency. In fact, it reveals every nuance and all the details in the music. It maintains a sort of calm and confident demeanor while also being able to capture the energy and it has this really nice rhythmic drive to it as well. Additionally, it delivers a very natural and a well-balanced sound. The staging is really lovely. It's got this nice holographic 3D sound stage, just like the E70. Uh, I think they are fairly similar in terms of sound stage. I will say the E70 Velvet, it's just got something a little extra special about it. It's got the spacing it's got the dynamics, of course. It, uh, the, the E70 actually measures slightly better, believe it or not. But we're talking ridiculous numbers because it is a topping DAC. And, uh, you know, they've been crushing the numbers, numbers game for a long time. This has got a beautiful bass extension. You get the full bass response. There's nothing. There's no roll off whatsoever. There's nothing lacking. However, it is not boosted in the bass. It's it's all neutral and transparent. The mid range sounds incredibly natural. Beautiful timbre. Instruments sound rich. They've got a natural note weight. Vocals sound fantastic, both male and female, with no coloration throughout the mid range. I've tried this with all different kinds of music genres, including jazz, electronic, hip hop, rock, hardcore. Um, it, it just keeps up with all the music really nicely. It doesn't have any trouble whatsoever keeping up with extremely complex or fast paced music. And then at the same time, it's got this nice, like I mentioned, rhythmic drive. It's got a nice sense of timing. And then in the treble, it's got this wonderfully precise and clean treble. It doesn't sound accentuated or it doesn't sound rolled off in any way. Again, just nice and transparent, just sends that signal through. But it does so in a way that makes the imaging in the sound stage very precise. And now going back to the E70 comparison, I would say the E70 Velvet just sounds slightly calmer. It I think the bass extension might even be a bit more, uh, a bit fuller on the Velvet version here. In terms of the mid-range, I think the mid-range notes just sound slightly more natural. Maybe they just are slightly more rounded and not as harshly etched as they are on the E70. And then the treble, I would say the treble is pretty much identical on both units. Like I said, the difference is very slight. If you've already got the, where is it? Let me bring it in. If you've already got the E70, I don't really think there's any need for you to upgrade to the E70 Velvet. But if you are just starting out and if you've got the extra money to spare, yeah, I do believe the Velvet sounds better, but there's very little in it. Having said that, even considering that, the the value of this thing, this is one of the best performing DACs that you'll find anywhere for under $500, which makes the original E70 even better value. But if you want the absolute best under $500, you should definitely go for the Velvet. And I absolutely love this thing. And I love using it with my L70 amplifier. It's a gorgeous stack. And whenever I'm not sort of testing other audio equipment at the moment, this is a good stack for me because uh, the units are the same size and they fit beautifully together. However, I am still fond of my SMSL DACs. I love those as well. Very hard to pick a winner out of those two. But it's nice just to have the sort of uh, coherency or the, the, the aesthetic matching of the displays of this one and the L70. They just look great together. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, Give it a thumbs up, Parfam audio file style. And if you're new here or if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? And until next time, I'll see you later.